Have you ever said to yourself, I wish I better understood how to properly select, size, and install large meters for our water utilities, commercial, and industrial applications? Well, if so, today is your lucky day. I've put together a nine-part series that will cover all the aspects you need to understand in order to put in the right meter the right way. In part one, we're going to review why sizing and selection is so important, and we'll review a case study by a major US-based water utility that went through this process utility-wide and saw major revenue increases. Let's dive into it. Welcome to the Smart Water Show, brought to you by Badger Meter. I'm your host, Maurice Blackwell, and this is the show where we discuss your everyday water utility problems and find the most effective technology solutions for you. Stay tuned for our question of the day at the end of this video to enter our weekly giveaway. Sizing and selection of water meters is one of my favorite subjects to teach. In this nine part series, we're going to cover the following. Today in part one, will help you understand why sizing and selection is so important. Part two will walk through the process of understanding the application profile. In parts three through six, we'll discuss the four major types of meters used in commercial industrial applications, positive displacement, turbine, compound, and electronic meters. We'll break down how each metering technology works, look at their application criteria, and discuss the applications they are best suited for. Part eight will dive into the things we need to consider for installing each meter type. And last but not least, in part nine, we'll review an interactive quiz where I will test your skills with the review of five applications. You can pause the video, take the quiz, and I'll review the answers and the rationale for each selection with you. Let's get started. We're going to discuss four things today regarding the importance of selection, sizing, and meter installation. We'll talk about the potential loss of revenue. We'll discuss the customer service related issues that go along with missizing a meter. We'll get into understanding why it's important to truly analyze the current application that you're putting a meter into. And then lastly, we will review a case study that will show you the advantages of going down this path of meter right sizing. Loss revenue. There's three things that you can do wrong related to the loss of revenue. If you undersize a meter or improperly install a meter, it's going to do three things. It could potentially prematurely wear out. When it prematurely wears out, you're going to lose accuracy, meaning that you're going to lose revenue. And lastly, a meter that might be undersized or improperly installed is going to cause you additional maintenance work on that meter. If you oversize a meter, it won't properly collect your low flows. For instance, let's say I have an application where the customer uses a quarter of a gallon per minute, let's say 25% of the time. If I have a two inch turbine meter installed in that application, a two inch turbine meter has an operating range of four gallons per minute, all the way up to 310 gallons per minute. So think about what's happening at that meter. For all the time that the customer is using flows less than four gallons per minute, in this case, 25% of the time, they're using a quarter gallon per minute, I'm not collecting those revenues because the meter is not supposed to register at those flows. If I were to change that to either an electronic meter or a compound meter of the right size, now I might be collecting all of those revenues throughout the range of the application. Customer service issues. Every meter has a particular pressure drop associated with that particular size and type of meter. If a customer needs a particular pressure for their business to operate correctly, and I undersize a meter, I may start to get complaints from that customer related to pressure. If I have an improper installation of a turbine or a compound meter, understand that that meter can actually over register or under register depending on how the meter is installed. Now you might say, that's great. If it over registers, I'm collecting more revenue. The problem with that is this. 
if a customer was ever to request a certified meter test and that test result showed that the meter was registering 102 or 103 or 104 percent that customer may bring a legal suit against the water utility and that's something none of us want to deal with on the other hand that improper installation could lead to an under registration again the customer is not going to complain about that but i'm not going to collect the proper revenue at that particular account this next topic is near and dear to my heart because it happens every day at water utilities around the country. Let's say a particular meter fails or is scheduled to be replaced. The meter technician normally says, I've got a three inch compound here. I need to replace that or repair it. I'm going to go to the shop and I'm going to get the, another three inch compound meter. And I'm going to put that in. The thing that I want to warn you of is to take the opportunity to think about the current application. If we take a look at the picture shown here, this is something that happens in many downtowns across the US. You've got a building that at one point in time was probably a manufacturing building back in the 40s or 50s or 60s. Well, today that same building is what? It's a, it's a condo complex, right? The needs of the manufacturer when that building was originally built were very different than they are today. If I have now in this particular building, I've got 20 apartments. And before this was a major manufacturer, let's say it was a meat processing plant. Well, they had needs of very high flows. The needs of the current application is different. So just because the current meter is one type of meter doesn't mean that same type of meter needs to be there today. And it also doesn't mean that the same size meter needs to be there. They may have had an eight inch turbine meter on this. If I've got 20 apartments, I might get away with a two inch compound for this particular application. Instead of just always replacing what's there, take the opportunity to think about and discuss what the current application is. The last point I want to make here is to consider new metering technology, such as some of the electronic meters on the market today. These technologies weren't available 10 or 20 years ago. So many of these applications that have turbines or compounds in them from the past could be downsized or at least changed over to some of the electronic meters available on the market today. Let's review a great case study by Boston Water. In 1992, at the AWWA convention, John Selvin, who's Boston Water's Director of Engineering, reported on a project that he had done over the past two years. What John had done is take a hard look at all of their large meters at Boston Water. What he found out was that many of their meters were oversized turbine meters. He went through the process to analyze the customer's usage profile and put in the right particular meter. The results that John reported at the AWWA convention were this. He was now able to account for an additional 113,784 cubic feet per day of water that they weren't reporting before. Through those efforts, over a five year period, Boston Water saw a $6.8 million increase in water and sewer revenue. This is a great example of the benefits that can be had by meter right sizing. If you have any questions about today's topic of the importance of water meter sizing and selection, feel free to ask a question in the comment section below. Our question of the day. What aspects of meter sizing, selection, and installation do you want to know more about? please provide your reply in the comment section below and be one of the first 10 people to reply to be entered into our weekly Smart Water Show giveaway. If you found value in this content, be sure to click the like button. Stay tuned for part two of this series where we will break down how to get a handle on understanding your customer's application profile, the heart of selecting the right meter. We'd like to thank you for watching this video and we'll catch you next time on the Smart Water Show.